Welcome to the series of webinars and tutorials on the Zeltus product line. In this video, we will be introducing you to ZAC9. ZAC, or Zeltus Advanced Communicator, is a unified communication client that lets Zeltus customers communicate and collaborate regardless of where they're located. ZAC is available to download as an app, and you can also use our web-based version, WebZAC. If you're using a Chromebook or a tablet, you can use the web version of ZAC client in the browser. No download necessary. In this demonstration, I will be using the application version of Zach. When you log into Zach for the very first time, you may be prompted to set up your multi-factor authentication. As the next step, you are going to see this screen where you select your physical location from a list. So if you have an emergency and need to call for help from your results of system, emergency responders can have a better idea where you are. And if you're a member of a call group, you can select whether you want to log into it right away. Now you will be taken to your ZAC application. In the top left corner is your name and present state. You can change your present state to show your coworkers when you're busy, available, at lunch, and so on. You can also add a note for extra context. Because I don't get to see my coworkers face to face very often, the first thing I'm going to do is click here to upload a picture of myself for my avatar. I can also enter my email and cell phone number in the screen. This information will be shown to my coworkers when they look at my info screen. Before getting too far into the application, let's quickly check the settings. They can be found in the menu up here. You have options to automatically change present states, to leave messages after a certain amount of time passes, and so on. This is also where you set up your call handling rules and voicemail notification rules. I would like to draw your attention to the settings in this section. The Microsoft Outlook contact integration lets you see your Outlook contacts in Zach. For Mac users, you also have an option to integrate Zach with Apple contacts. This unified communication setting enables you to see Zach present state of coworkers in Outlook when you're writing them an email, for example. One last setting you should make sure is configured correctly before you start using Zach is your device binding. And it's actually down here at the very bottom of the screen. One really cool thing that you can do with Zeltus is use any device as your business phone. We achieved that with binding. You can bind to a Zeltus phone or any other phone, even a cell phone via a phone number. Or you can bind to a soft phone and use your computer's speaker and mic or a headset. If you already have a phone assigned to you in the system, Zach will bind to it automatically. Zach has a compact mini mode and maximized mode. In both modes, the icons for different parts of the application show up along the left side. Keep in mind that some of the more complex features in Zach aren't available when Zach is in mini mode. Let's take a look at the different screens of the application. We've got Recents, where you can see your recent calls and messages and other activity. Then there's Buddy screen, where you can save the contacts you interact with regularly. Then we have Group screen, where you can chat with multiple people at the same time. I will go over both those screens in more details later in the video. Next up is the Voicemail screen, where you can see your voicemails and recordings. If you are a member of a call group, over here you can toggle between messages for your user account and for any call groups that you are part of. Zach can be set up to work with voicemail transcription service, so if you can't listen to a message, you can read its content. Click here to check how much storage space you are using, and if you're about to run out of space, you can delete messages or recordings. You can delete messages one by one, select a few at a time, or all of the messages if you click here. Then either delete selected or mark it as read. Next is the contact screen. It's a directory of all the users on the MX system. Then we have fax, where you can send and receive fax messages. You can send fax messages from Zach with no need for a dedicated fax device. Click here on send, type the number or select a contact in the system, then select the file from your computer and add a cover letter if necessary. This fax interface over here is the same as the voicemail screen you just saw. You can see your storage usage, mark messages as read or delete them all at once or one at a time. You can easily tell the sending status of a fax message. Red icon means it failed to send. Blue icon means that it's currently in the process of sending. And then if there is no icon at all, then the message has gone out already with no issue. Conference screen is where you can see your scheduled conference calls, I will come back to this screen later in the video as well. Then we have Park, where you can see any calls that are currently parked in the system and you can pick them up from this screen. And then there's Speed Dial. This is a section of the application where you can dial frequently used numbers that are configured by your system administrator. There is actually one more icon on the bottom of this menu, but it only appears when you are logged in as a call group member. You can log in and out of the group when you first log into Zach or in this area right under your username. 
As an agent of a call group, you have your agent presence. You can toggle it here. Available means that you can get calls for your call group or not available. There is also wrap up, which means you just got off a group call and may need to document anything related to the call before moving on to the next one. You can get new incoming agent calls when you're either in unavailable or in wrap up status. This over here is where you select your active role. What does an active role mean? If I select my user role, Lisa Adams, as my active role and make a phone call to a coworker, they will see that Lisa is calling them. On the other hand, if my active role is set to the operator and I make an outbound call, the coworker will see the operator group name as the caller ID. The same applies to calls outside your organization if the operator group has a different caller ID number configured. Agent role screen, the screen that's only available when you're logged into at least one call group, is where you can see all the members of your group and you can toggle to expand or minimize the group. This is where you can check if your fellow group members are online and who is available to take a call. When you get a call as an agent of a call group, the call will be clearly marked as such. If your company has enabled our call attached data feature, or CAT for short, you would get prompted to add notes to your call. If you then have to transfer this call to another teammate, the notes you take here will be visible to them. So if your customer is having an issue and you have to transfer them to the next level of support, for example, they don't have to repeat their issue all over again to the next person they speak to. Let's go back to the buddy list. This is where you can add coworkers and other contacts who you regularly interact with. I want to add someone to my buddy list. I start by going to the contact screen, here, I can type their name and then I right click on them and click to add them as my buddy. Another thing you can do in the buddy list is add your other contacts and not just coworkers. Click on add and then contact and then fill out this information here. To make it easier to manage all your buddies, you can organize them into groups. For example, Tessa and John are both in the marketing department. I'm going to click here to add a group and call it marketing. And then I'm going to click on Tessa and add her to the group or I can drag and drop the contacts to add them to the group too. Let's say I need to get in touch with Tessa. I can mouse over her name and Zach and select to either open a chat session or start a call. If I actually click on her name, I will see a log of our recent activities, phone calls and chat messages. I can send her a message here. I can reply to a message Tessa sent me or even reply to a portion of the message. If Tessa sent me something that applies to another coworker or a group of them, I can forward it like this. If my company is using SMS and Tessa has her mobile number configured, click here to choose whether to send an SMS or an instant message through the Zelta system. By the way, Zelta now supports MMS messaging, which means I can send and receive images through SMS in Zach as well. Oh, and I can also send Tessa files in Zach if I click on the paperclip or drag and drop a file I want to share into this window. Let's take a look at other options I have. I can click here to see Tessa's info here for the repository of all the files and links Tessa and I exchanged, there's a button for a call history and an option where I can search through our chat history and look for specific topics or even file names. Lastly, I can pin this tab so it always stays in my Zach window. I'm going to start a call with Tessa. There are some options available here. For example, I can put her on hold, I can click here to transfer the call, or I can drag and drop the call to a buddy or someone in the contacts or a speed dial list. You can turn on your video and turn this call into a video call at any time as long as you're bound to a soft phone. Please note that this feature will not work if you're bound to a desktop phone or an external phone number. If you have on-demand call recording feature, click here to record the call. On the other hand, if you have automatic call recording set up, here would be the option to pause the recording. Tessa and I are working on a presentation right now and it would be really helpful if we could look at the same slide. I can share my screen with Tessa by clicking on this button here, or she can share her screen with me. While on a screen share, I can click here to open a chat log, and if I need to type exactly what I think she should put on this slide, I can do that. Or if there's an image I think she should add, I can send it through her through Zach right now. I can have more than one call at the same time. I'm still on the call with Tessa, but I have an incoming call from John. I can click here to answer him, and Zach will automatically put Tessa's call on hold. If I click here, I can transfer John to Tessa, or I can create a conference with myself, Tessa, and John. Once in the conference, I can check on the list of participants of this conference call and even mute or disconnect someone this way. Once you are in this impromptu conference, you and your teammates can add video, share screen, file, and work on any tricky project.
If you have several coworkers you collaborate with regularly, you can add all of them into a group to keep the conversations together. In the group screen, I can click here to see a list of public groups I can join. If you want to join an existing private group, you will need to be invited. I'm going to create a new group. I'll call it Marketing Team and I'll select Tessa and John from our list of employees. If I type a message here, both Tessa and John will get a notification. And this way, whenever we interact, all the conversations are logged in here. What else can I do in a group? I can share my screen with our other group members, same way as I did with an individual person. We can share files to the whole group as well. And I can also do video calls with my teammates. Another cool thing you can do in the group is hold conference calls with all the group members. Click here to start an audio conference and all the group members can join the conference or leave whenever they like. Or if you have an emergency and need to reach everyone at once, you can click here to ring all the group members right now. If I click here to start a conference, I will have an option to preview my setting before I join the call. Here's where I can turn on video, on and off, and select which camera to use or which mic. By the way, when you are on the call itself, you can toggle these settings by clicking here. A really cool feature of Zach is the ability to give people outside your company access to the same tools that you and your teammates use internally. If you are working with someone who doesn't have Zach and need to send them files, video calls, screen share, and so on, you can now invite them to use Zach-like interface as a guest. You can invite guests into one-on-one -on -one chat or you can have them join a group chat. The capabilities are the same and the invitation process is very similar. I'll start with a one-on-one -on -one chat invite. To initiate it, I go into my info screen, click here, invite chat by link. I select how long this link will be active for, and here's where I can set a password that my guest is going to type to join in. For this example, I'm going to do a quick 24-hour link with a simple password. I'm interviewing a candidate for a position on my team, and I want to be able to talk face-to-face -face via video calling. The candidate will also be providing me their work samples, so that the send files feature will be very handy. I'm going to copy this link and send it to my candidate along with the password. Now the candidate, Amanda, is going to click on the link and put in the password and she is in. On login, she's going to get an option to use her computer's speaker and mic to make phone calls using built-in soft phone. Yes, that's right, Amanda doesn't have Zach, but she has access to the built-in soft phone feature anyway. Up here, she can see whether I'm unavailable and here are the options to call, video call, and screen share. This last option here is to adjust the audio setting. Amanda can chat with me same as any other Zach user, and she can send me files. Looks like she's ready to start that interview. So Amanda's interview went great, and now I want her to meet the rest of the team. Conveniently enough, I already have that marketing group chat from earlier. I open the info area and click to invite by chat here. Same deal as before, I set expiration time and password and send Amanda the link and she can join the group chat. Now she can send messages to the rest of the team, share her files here, and she can also join a conference call with us. Let's go back to conference screen as this area got a few enhancements with Zach 9. I can either schedule a conference, start one ad hoc, or join a conference in progress. For example, if my teammates are on the conference call and send me an ID to join. There are also other ways to join a conference, which I'll show you in a minute. All the cool collaboration features that I've been talking about in this video are available in this conference. Screen share, video calling, file sharing, and chat. All the functionality you need conveniently in one interface. So what do I need to do if I need to start an impromptu conference right now? I can click here. I give my conference a title and I can select to add any of the contacts on the phone system from this screen. If necessary, I can set a password for this conference to ensure that any external participant needs to enter the password to get into the call. I can send an email meeting invite for this conference via our Outlook integration and add anyone I want to join the conference here, both internal and external. As you can see, there are different links for internal and external participants to click. If I go back to the Zach screen and in the corner here, I click on the Plus, I will see a few other ways to invite people. Here is the ID that I got from my coworker previously. For an external participant, the simplest method to invite is to click on this link here and copy it into an email or in an SMS message if necessary. Once I am finished with our call, I will be prompted on whether I want to keep the record of this conference after I'm done. Let's say if you had shared files in the conference and want to keep them for reference later, you can click to keep the conference here. Otherwise, you can delete it. Finally, we are going to go over how to schedule a conference for later. We already went over how to invite attendees, 
That part is the same for scheduled conferences and the ones you start ad hoc. The main difference is that you need to pick a time for your conference. By the way, time here is based on the time zone that your phone system is in. So if you're working remotely from a different time zone, you may need to adjust the time accordingly. Lastly, you need to choose if this is a one-time conference, a reoccurring conference that will repeat every day, week, month, and so on, or it could be an ongoing conference. Ongoing conferences don't have a time attached to them and could be instead started at any time. For example, I want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with my teammate every week, but due to frequent travel, I might need to hold this call on different weekdays from time to time. So what I'll do is I'll send an email invite and add the time and date into that invite. Let's say it's going to be Wednesday every week, except for this one Wednesday in two weeks where I know I'll be traveling. So I'll move the calendar invite for that day to a different weekday. These ongoing conference links can also be used as your own personal conference room with a unique persistent conference ID that people both inside and outside of your organization can join whenever you need them to. It will also keep records of past conferences and any files you share and so on. Well, I have a conference to start. I click here and I'm ready to start collaborating with my teammates and people outside my organization. And that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.